Hey everybody, John the Other here, obviously. And what I'm going to read to you is basically, uh, I tried to do a video just talking off the cuff and I ended up after a couple of minutes <laughs> spitting mad. So I wrote it all down and I'm going to try to convey the same thing in a more contained, calm manner. Here we go. The courts are no longer where we resolve grievances. We have lost that. You could say we threw it out with great violence. And when I say we, maybe I'm being not precise enough. Women have chosen gossip through social media as their preferred venue for justice because it is easy, it is fast, and it's very, very efficient. The customer gets what they want. That might even be a good example of the free market at work. The actual courts are comparatively slow, they're costly to the participants, and they produce outcomes which are not always at the preference of the customer. By contrast, if you're female and you want somebody out of your way or removed from their job or eliminated as competition, social media and media will give you exactly what you want, like right now. Patrick Brown, the former leader of the Ontario Progressive Conservative Party, was judged the most likely challenger to Kathleen Wynne's provincial liberal administration. Four, five, four months before the Ontario provincial election, it took two hours for Patrick Brown's party and his personal staff to discard him based on a news story of sexual gossip that did not even c contain a claim of criminal wrongdoing, and he's, ba he's, he's gone based on that gossip. The CBC, reporting on this political beheading, linked to that in the low bar, took the view that hashtag MeToo, the large-scale disposal of thousands of men from their careers based on sexual gossip, is a really good thing, because women are vulnerable, helpless, powerless, voiceless, unable to handle adult sexuality without disposing of every man who makes a clumsy gesture or a sexual joke. In short, women are utterly weak, they're endlessly helpless, and we are rightly disposing of our basic concepts of presumed innocence and due process to protect women. That's the approved reality. That's the story. However, to an observer, it appears that there is in fact nothing as powerful as a woman's voice. Fact checking? Nope. Inquiry into evidence? <laughs> nope. Reliabil reliability or reputation of the character of an accuser? Nah, forget about that. Listen and believe. That's what you're supposed to do. Who will determine what is true? Who is a criminal? Who is a victim? Well, I guess actresses and singers are going to be our new judges and juries. Not actual judges. Not journalists following the rules of responsible journalism. Although, yes, journalists, when they repeat gossip and slander with no fact-checking. So what this means for men is that if you work hard to achieve something in your life and a woman, any woman, takes the notion into her head that your success does not directly and immediately benefit her, you can and you will be removed and your life's achievements turned to ash and you will have no recourse. Those men who do achieve success in whatever ventures they might pursue and who are allowed to keep their successes will be those who pander or flatter or who ostentatiously serve hand and foot on the women benefiting from that man's resources and his success. Well, that's a world of two-faced, self-abasing, servile male feminists ruled over by the fiat of female narcissists. That's not where we're going in the world of Me Too. That's where we are. And it's obvious now, and it's out in the open. Now, this is not terribly far from the traditionalist social model in which men and women each had discrete and well-defined social roles. The difference being in the traditionalist model in which men had a public respectability as men, the women who conferred men's social approval on them were themselves held to a standard of ethical behavior. So is there a standard of behavior that modern feminist women are held to? Or is the acceptable code of conduct just about any damned thing she decides, no matter how absurd, how scatological, how violent, how unjustifiably accusatory, or how morally depraved. Now, I'm not going to make an argument that feminists or women in general need to or should conform to any particular standard of decency. That's up to them. But I do want to point out 
that who is clearly in now 100% total control of public moral judgment of men is women, particularly feminist women. And why are we granting moral authority to a class of people who have gone to great effort in the past three decades to ostentatiously rebuke any conventional ethical standard? I have no answer for that. But I will point out that we typically do not take financial advice from the homeless, and we do not typically take dietary advice from the morbidly obese or from the anorexic. And if you're a man, particularly a young man, considering how you will make your way into the world, what is the message that is now in your ears at deafening, crushing volume? As near as I can determine, the message is that you will be allowed to exist only so long as women see that you are serving them. Remembering that unlike a traditional model in which there are you know, gender roles, that allowance to exist is coming from a feminine ethic which has no standards for itself of behavior, morality, conduct, and so on. What kind of a man is willing to sacrifice anything of himself to that kind of a system? And as we are ever more aware of this by each object lesson of the Me Too movement, we must be continuously reminded that women are powerless victims of men. We must all make appropriate public abasement to these poor, helpless, downtrodden victims who we are the oppressors of. It is to puke. And women, the ones who are not like that, the ones sitting on their hands, doing precisely nothing, saying precisely nothing, even those women venturing into male spaces to tell a male audience that yes, you support men and you oppose feminism, what the hell are you telling men for? What the hell are you doing to bother telling us a damned thing? We are not in charge of anything anymore. And men's approval or disapproval of a woman selling the anti-feminist message has no impact whatsoever. It is women you're going to have to go sway if you actually give a damn. So go do that. And don't imagine your posture towards men counts for anything or that it fools anything. Women, you are the only people allowed to have a voice now. Don't waste it by talking to men just so you can get ego validation from that. We're noticing. And I have to presume that women on the side of anti-feminism, you know, want something from men besides uh, open warfare. So a demonstration that there is some basis for trust is, I think, necessary now. And this really does extend to all areas of life. How is it that men should be able to coexist in public space with women while a non-stop slaughter of men's careers and accomplishments is ongoing and being cheered as if it is a wonderful and enlightened thing by the so-called respectable media? Another question I have no answer for. But men, and uh, I would say feminist men in particular, you guys are in the most dire threat. Much more than so-called evil misogynist men like myself, my sense of self can't be taken away from me by your masters. I would say the most courageous thing a male feminist can do is say no, and depart from the system of value in which, based on whim, you can and you will be expediently disposed of to signal terror to other men and to signal virtue to those who are obedient and remain after you've been disposed of. But for men who do not buy into the idiotic fantasy of women being a helpless, voiceless, powerless class of subjugated victims, it is becoming increasingly obvious that our currently co-educational mixed society is a game of Russian roulette, and it's one in which the gun is in the hands of the most neurotic female whose path you might cross. And you, gentlemen, no longer have any reasonable form of defense. In effect, we are not in a civilized society anymore. So what are you going to do, gentlemen? Are you going to bow and scrape in the hopes that somewhere along your path of life success, when you have worked for a home or a family or a career, it will not be vaporized out from underneath you in a couple of hours by some mean girl gossip? You'd have to be stupid. Or maybe you think your life is actually worth something. Do you think you have value as a human being, and your plans and your accomplishments and your ambitions, maybe they matter? Or is the message from women not loud enough for you to hear yet? <laughs> Thanks very much for listening, and as always, have a lovely, lovely day.